Welcome to another scriptural empirical calendar and astronomical study in which we together as one will be exploring the sign of the 22nd day of the 12th month. Yes, there is a sign for each and every day. Most people just only look at new moon days and that is it. But with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah with the sun, moon and stars, you can compare year after year, day by day. It's very easy to do, especially in this day and age. So again, I am narrating this scriptural study on the pagan day of Monday, April 15th, 2024, which is the third Sabbath of the 12th month on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah from our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one. As always, please stop the video at any time to ensure that you get the opportunity to focus on all of the information being shared, as we will be going through this presentation quite quickly. As always, we leave each and every one of these visuals from each of these scriptural study videos in the description box of this YouTube uh, video with a PDF link. So if it's too fast, you can pull up the PDF link and we encourage everyone to critique in full all of the information being shared because any of you can do this. It's extremely easy. It looks complicated, but once you do it a few times, it becomes extremely easy. So as an example, Yeshayahu the prophet had stated in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, and it shall be that from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares Yahuwah. So as we know, the very first page of scripture says that the sun, moon, and stars are for days, years, and appointed times that produce signs. So we can track each sign for each Sabbath in each month annually. So it's very easy to do. And let's go now to the year 2023 in the 12th month, uh, which was a uh, pagan day of Tuesday, March 28th. There was a 13th month that year, last year in 2023. And this is why we know we're only in a 12th month this year, because the sign last year on that date, third Sabbath sign, scriptural day start, dawn, first light, fourth watch. As you can see, Ursa Major uh, with Merrick and Dubay pointing to Polaris, the tail end of Ursa Major pointing to its two sons, Arcturus and Spica. And as you can see, Ursa Major pointing to the twins, Pollux and Castor. And Hamal is leading, uh, obviously, uh, Pallades and Orion right here. So that is a sign for the 22nd day of the 12th month. Now, some of you in the Southern Hemis plane obviously will not see the North Star. Uh, and will only catch the tail end of Ursa Major, and in some cases not at all. But you will see, at the dawn, first light, fourth watch, Arcturus and Spica in the western quadrant. Again, the moon will be well below the horizon, as will be the sun. It's getting ready for a first day, first month event in another week. So that was in 2023. So there it is. We track everything. We are extremely serious. We are spiritually disciplined to number our days each and every day to look at where the sun, moon, and stars are for not only the daytime period from sunrise to noon to sunset into the first watch, a reb evening, second, third, and fourth watch as we're doing here. Some people don't take a detailed look. They're not spiritually disciplined at this time to do it. Why? Well, we're not blaming anybody. It's hard work. It's laborious. But we have a love of the truth and we enjoy the witnesses that Yahuwah provides. The Father of Lights provides witnesses. So let's go to 2024. Here we are in the 12th month. And as we can see, the 22nd day, third Sabbath, is on the pagan day of uh, Monday, April 15th, right here. And 
there's the same sign as last year. So, Ursa Major pointing to Polaris, its tail pointing to the two suns, Arcturus and Spica, in the western quadrant. Moon is below the horizon at the fourth watch, starting from the dawn. Uh, Ursa Major is pointing to the twins, and again, Hamal is leading Pallades and Orion. That's 2024. 2025, it'll be the same thing, and that will occur on the pagan day of April 6th, again at the dawn. So everyone will see these stars at that time period. And if you understand the phases of the moon and the stars, along with the sun itself, with a true day start at the dawn, bringing us to the sunrise, Sunrise starts the first watch. First watch doesn't start before then. Sunrise starts the first watch. Dawn is Bakar. It's morning. It's the first light. It's daybreak. Uh, sunrise is not daybreak. It's, it's the start of the first watch. Ah, sorry. Start of the first hour. My mistake. So make a long story short. Combine these three years as three witnesses because Yahuwah's witnesses are wonders and why our being observes them. And I can film and photograph these scriptural stars. I can see them with the human eye, just like each and every one of you all over Earth can do. So why not use the scriptural stars? Why not do it? And then this brings us to last week's scriptural study video on the solar eclipse that occurred on the pagan day of Monday, April 8th, 2024. And that was the 15th day of the 12th month, the second Sabbath of the 12th month. And we asked the uh, inevitable question, would everyone on earth be resting on this Sabbath day? And or would you be buying and selling and traveling with the many of the world? So it was a very uh, excellent scriptural study video. And as we all know, Hanok was clear that the remaining light of her, the moon, he always... Um, talked about the moon in the female gender aspect and that the phase of that moon would disappear wholly on the 15th and as we know a conjunction moon phase creates a solar eclipse this is kindergarten astronomy so uh, tons of photographs thank you everyone for helping out with that that was excellent and here we are that was the second sabbath on the pagan day of Monday, April 8th, right there, 2024, 12th month. And there was the sign at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's in my area when the moon was at a totality with the eclipse with the sun. Uh, complete darkness, if you will. And as you can see, the moon was in the southwest area and Hamal was leading Pallades and Orion, and in the east was Pollux and Castor. Now, everyone could see that, no matter where you lived, during totality. Now, my totality happened to be at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But this is what you would have seen for this latest solar eclipse. So, there it is. Now, let's go to... 2023 for the second Sabbath, which was on the pagan day of March, which was a Tuesday, the 21st, 2023. Let's go there because there was a 13th month in 2023. And this is why we know we are in the 12th month this year, because it's the same 12th month sign for the second Sabbath on the 15th day. Very easy to prove. And there it is. Same sign as we experienced this year. Now, last year, there was no solar eclipse. The moon was not in full conjunction. It was at 0.1% illuminated. But the height of the moon did not match the height of the sun and thus did not give us a total solar eclipse. So, make a long story short, though, if we did experience it, you'd see the same star pattern as you would as we uh, viewed this year. So Hamal leading Pallades, Orion as it does, and Pollux and Castor in the east. Well, that's pretty easy to understand because in 2025, on the pagan day of March 28th, 
you'll see the same sign uh, for the 15th day of the 12th month. Remember, if you're caught up in just looking at new moon days, then you don't have a full trust of Yahuwah, the Father of Lights, because, again, the sun, moon, and stars are for days. That means each and every day, not just for new moon days. So you can track all the Sabbaths annually as well, and they have their own sign. Now, you can track it if you want to do it at the dawn or different time periods through the four watches. And with the advent of Stellarium, you can even do the noon time period if you want to. So again, extremely easy to do. And this is why we have the utmost in confidence to share these slides with you, because each and every one of you can test and prove this for yourself. If you're caught up in Stellarium art with man-made constellations, you will not be able to see the signs daily, because you're only looking at it monthly at such a high level without the precision that Yahuwah, the Father of Lights, provides. So at the end of the day, very basic to explain, and here it is on one slide, the three witnesses for the 15th day of the 12th month. Three years, and this is why we shout out to Yahuwah. We cry out to him for deliverance. So um, we go all the way back to 2013 with scriptural study videos on the 12th month. But here are four from 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. If you're so inclined and are interested in really understanding Job chapter 38, verse 32, and Hanuk uh, chapter 72, verse 3, about the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead. And we thank all the people that forecast in advance. Now, we don't have to do this personally anymore because... It's second hat, so to speak. And we do these charts continually in servitude of others that are coming onto this that are new. By forecasting, you get to understand the movement of the sun uh, and the moon and the total uh, illumination and how that uh, grows and then diminishes, just like the writings of Hanok State. The 180 degree uh, witness, dawn, sunrise, and sunset. We do it all. We measure all of it and even more. Why? Because his witnesses are wonders. And this is why our being observes them. Now, some people don't want to do this because it's too hard work. Yes, it demands spiritual discipline. It does. It's a spiritual journey to do this work. You have to be motivated influenced by the Ruach HaKadosh. It's a lot of hard work. It's a spiritual journey, so to speak. We utilize all of the perfect witnesses of light to see what aligns us all together as one, rather than what happens out in the world today, regrettably, than a solar view only, or a lunar view only, or just a lunar solar view only that ignores the stars. Those... Uh, two approaches divides everyone. The sun, moon, and stars, yes, all three witnesses to establish a matter, unites us towards keeping the proper new moon days, Sabbaths, and feast days. It's very basic, and this is why we continue to uh, have joy in the forecast. So again, the first day of the 12th month in 2023 was on the pagan day of uh, Tuesday, March 7th. And again, there was a 13th month in 2023. Well, let's go verify that one more time. So here we are, 2023. As we can see, Regulus is leading the moon, not uh, Alzania, uh, which is a 13th month. This would be leading the moon, Alzania. Uh, and Zavi Java, it would be, the moon would be in this range for a 13th month, but it was a 12th month in March 6, 2023 very basic to explain and so that's 2023 let's go to 2024 here we're in a 12th month yes indeed we're in a 12th month we're not in a first month we're not in a 13th month if you are led by a beeb and you guard the month of a beeb by uh, being led by it then you'll know why you're in a 12th month so here we are on the pagan day of uh, Monday 
March 25th. So let's take a look at the sign. There it is, the night before. The moon is being led by Regulus, same sign. In 2025, Regulus and all the rest of the same signs. Put them all together. Again, same signs. So this is a 12th month that we're in right now. And today is that third Sabbath of the 12th month, which is always on the 22nd day of any scriptural month, including this 12th month that we are now in. Why? Well, again, we use the first page of scripture, all three witnesses of light that are for days, years, and appointed times, which produce signs in the expanse of the heavens to give light or knowledge on earth on how to tell time. Yes, Yahuwah, our father of lights, gives us the wisdom. Not any man, including myself, and or any woman, and more importantly, not a world religion that is definitely Talmudic. So we use the scriptural stars as well. Out of the trillions and trillions of stars that exist, these ones you can see with the human eye. You don't need any aids, binoculars, telescopes. And this is why you can film these ones and photograph them in any given month. And we always interpret scripture according to scripture or, or do our very best. And as such, why we've learned that the old covenant proves that a scriptural day start is at the dawn. Bukar, and there came to be morning. Bukar, the first day, which is daybreak. Dawn every morning. And Yahushua Mashiach, yeah, uh, our only teacher, started his day during the first light and why his taught ones did the same. Stop the video now. Take a look at these scriptural uh, verses. And we look at the signs, not just um, for one specific part of a day. We look where those sun, moon, and star signs are throughout the day. How they move. They move in a counterclockwise fashion from our vantage point or perspective from Earth. So again, we are believers of the four days of remembrance being led by Abib. And we believe that the first day of the first month of Abib, as per Jubilees, chapter 6, verse 23, is a day of remembrance. And we believe that Abib leads the moon. Starting at moonrise, Abib, the star speaker, will already be leading a moon that is either already fully restored or in progress of being accomplished. Fully lit up, if you will. So that's Hanuk, chapter 72, verse 3. So if you go into this further, Spica leads the moan. Ursa Major will be upside down, pouring out its water, so to speak, during the second to third watches. And the sun is in proximity to the morning star, the Lam, the Lam or Hamal, the middle star. Hamal is the Arabic of the constellation that we know of today as Aries. Just like the historical records show from Josephus that in Abib, um, the sun was in alignment with Hamal, or the Lamb. So, make a long story short, not rocket science, historical, scriptural, astronomical, and six months later that sign switches. So we're giving you the high level, the Coles Notes version of the four days of remembrance but again you can do this for sabbaths and feast days it produces significant and repetitive signs comparing day by day year after year so but in the first day seventh month it's opposite the morning star the lamb Hamal aries is now leading the moon the middle star ursa major now is in its upper position facing up being ready to accept the fall produce if you will during the second to third night watch. And the sun is in proximity to speak in Abib, known as the branch. Very basic if you understand uh, the seasonal, hourly, and navigational clock that Yahuwah has placed in the heavens that no one can manipulate. Now, everyone can reject it, which happens with world religions. I was part of that. I was born and raised in Roman Catholicism, and this was not taught to me. I do this work now, not because of uh, proper calendation as it relates to worshiping on the proper 
new moon day, Sabbaths, and feast days, but it also proves this consistency proves why Yahuwah is called the Father of Lights with his perfect witnesses from above. So you got to ask yourself the question, are you being led by Abib and or men and women with the religious traditionalism? Or are you getting outside, learning how the seasonal, hourly, and navigational clock works right to the second annually? Again, leaders of the stars and those whom they lead. So for the first day of the first month of Abib, which is a week away, when you go out there as that moon is becoming fully restored, you will see Abib leading it. Welcome to the sign along with the rest of the star positions from the scriptural record uh, that will tell you that you're in the first month of Abib. Again, Job chapter 38. If you understand how Yahuwah brings out the constellations in its season, you'll understand how he leads the bear with its sons. And one of those sons is Spica, Abib. They set the laws of the heavens. They set the rule over the earth. But if you're caught up in religious traditionalism and you're using constellation art and lines and you got Virgo vertigo, then this will behoove you. It did me. I fought it for many years. And if you go to Bereshith or Genesis and you get into... Uh, the word lead, it's, it's nakah. And when you're led by Abib, star speaker, you'll understand why Bereshith or Genesis chapter 12, verse 27, stated the following, and you'll understand why um, people were led uh, many, many, many eons ago in regards to this very basic scriptural uh, system of timing. So also read and learn why Abraham left Babylon. They were ignoring this. So when you get into uh, being led in that word, it's the pictograph of the seed, which is a picture of a sprouting seed representing continuance. And the second letter is a picture of a wall from a Paleo-Hebrew standpoint. Uh, the het, and as you can see, uh, it's like a tent, a picture of a wall that separates inside from the outside. Combine these two letters, the nun and the het, continue outside, and this system of timing is continuous. It can be rejected, and people don't look up, and they don't do the work. You have to be spiritually disciplined. You can't Go off your gut or your feelings. It's precise. And you can film and photograph it, forecast it, just as we've shared here since 2013 on this YouTube channel and before then in article format. Remember, these scriptural stars are in this apparent magnitude level that the human eye has been designed to see. That's why you can film and photograph it. Out of the trillions of stars that are not in this apparent magnitude, remember, you got a lot of people giving you all these different constellations that are man-made. And remember, there are 88 now. And they're giving you all these constellations, and they're giving you stars that you can't see with the human eye. You have to trust them. Again, that's the Talmudic Judaic priesthood. Trust us. Don't use your brain. Don't use your eyes. Don't trust in Yahuwah with all your heart. Lean on our understanding. Well, we don't do this on this YouTube channel. We're held to the fire. We provide evidence with film and photograph footage for New Moon Days, Sabbaths, and Feast Days. If you are involved in that journey, welcome aboard. If not... Please don't feel slighted in any way. It's nothing personal. We are spiritually disciplined. We do the work. You cannot be Laodicean. It's laborious. And we understand that some are not in a position to do this. But at the end of the day, this is why we give thanks to Yahuwah, the Almighty Father of Lights, and we recognize why we are awesomely and wondrously made. 
our eyes and our hands and fingers knows this calendar well because we can measure it and observe it, shamar it, if you will. And thus why we can guard or shamar the month of Abib by being led by Abib. And we continue to share these slides. So again, stop the video or go to the slides. Let's go to uh, the 2021 to 2022 time period. And let's talk about Abib now, the first day of the first month. Let's go back to 2022. And the first day of the first month of Abib back then was on the pagan day of uh, Sunday, uh, March, uh, sorry, April 17th. Sunday, uh, April 17th. There it is right there. And uh, let's go see the sign. Well, as we know, this is the night before at moonrise, first watch for Jerusalem. There's Spica leading the moon. There's Arcturus, there's Ursa Major pointing us to the North Star, Ursa Major pointing us to the Twins, and as we can see, Hamal is leading Pallades and Orion. So again, if you're in Melbourne, Australia, uh, parts of Argentina, well, you may not see all of Ursa Major, but you will see Arcturus speak uh, at moonrise, you will see the Twins, you will see... Um, Hamal leading Pallades and Orion in the West. You will see all that. And then as you get into the second watch, this clock moves counterclockwise. So welcome to the sign back in 2022. So there you go. That's 2022. Well, let's go to 2023, the first day of the first month was on the pagan day of Saturday, May 6th. There was some controversy because uh, the month before that, the pagan month of April had a 13th month and many missed that because they weren't led by a bee. Well, here's the sign. Speak as leading the moon. Same sign as 2022. Stop the video. All these slides are there for you. You can test and prove it for your area. This happens to be for Jerusalem, and we track not just our own location, we track all locations to see what the signs are for all of us that unite us. So same scriptural stars, night before, moonrise, getting into the first watch. And in 2024, okay, so there's 2023, and because we track every day in this manner, here is the first day of the first month, which will be on the pagan day of Wednesday, um, April 24th, and here we are, night before New Moon Day at Moonrise, speak as leading, same sign. Stop the video, verify. This isn't rocket science. It is laborious. And here it is on all three signs, the very same sign. This is why we know emphatically we're not in a first month here and now, let alone a 13th month. That is just silly. It is what it is. So, make a long story short, we track the first watch, second watch, to third watch, fourth watch, let alone noon, for the Sun, Moon, Spica, Arcturus, Hamal, Ursa Major, the Twins, Orion, Cassell, Pallades, and Kima. These are the stars that you will see in your scriptures. Now, we track more than this, obviously, but the cool thing about uh, these stars is, if you understand how they move throughout a given day, from the dawn to sunrise, the first hour. So from the fourth watch to sunrise, the first hour, all the way to noon, all the way to sunset, into Arab, the evening, first watch, second, third, and fourth. You'll have a great understanding of the rest of the constellations. So again, there are 88 today, regrettably, but you'll understand how everything moves. Thanks to Yahuwah, not me. All of this is easy to lay out, but again, it's laborious. So if you're interested in this spiritual, scriptural discipline of the sun, moon, and stars, the first page of scripture, it's a lot of hard work, but welcome aboard. If not, no hard feelings. Again, we look at the full face of the clock. Some people are just lazy. They draw squiggly lines on stellarium, and they do some pretty weird stuff, but at the end of the day... Are you being led by a beeb and are men or women 
with religious traditionalism. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 23 of Marcus. Very basic to explain, right? And think about it. Are you Roman? So this is called a parapegma. So what people do with the constellations is, is what the Romans did, where they put a little peg in the constellation where they thought the moon was. They didn't go by lead stars. They weren't led by a bee. They went on this parapegma, which some people call the parapigma solution. It, it's Virgo vertigo at best. And this is why you've got the Talmudic Judaic priesthood saying it's a 13th month right now. And by the way, find out where the term Adar comes from. It's Persian. And they don't know that 13th month events can occur within a three-year cycle and yes, a two-year cycle. And they ignore this because they're not led by a beep. They've got Virgo vertigo and all roads lead to Rome. Vertigo by its very definition is a dizzy, confused state of mind. And uh, again, it's, it's crazy. So make a long story short, get rid of the parapigma, get rid of the constellation art because it's astrology. It is not astronomy. If you're going by this and not the lead stars, in the case of the first month of the first uh, month of Abib, the first day, the actual star speaker, then you're going to get caught in some confusion. I did. I was caught up in this silliness. So stop the video. Find out who Virgo the Queen is. Find out who Virgo the Queen is. It's Virgo vertigo and it causes much consternation. Remember Romans chapter 1 verses 22 through 23. Claiming to be wise, they, they who? The world. They became fools and changed the esteem of the incorruptible Elohim, the father of light, Yahuwah himself, into the likeness of an Im image of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed beasts and of reptiles. Well, we have 88 constellations today. It's a mess. Some people think there's only 12. Uh, well, again, do your research. Spiritual discipline. So we have 42 animals today up in the heavens. We have 29 inanimate objects and 17 human mythological characters. It's a parapigma. It's a mess, as Marty Huggins would say. Some of you may know that joke. Anyways, just use the scriptural stars and that will tell you exactly everything else. And you'll be in a great position because you can film and photograph this for new moon days, Sabbaths, like we're doing now, let alone feast days. It's a wonderful thing. And if you want to go beyond that, you can do every day, compare it year after year. But some people just go into the 12 new moon days, which causes consternation. It's a parapigma. It's a paradigm that just won't hunt as they would say in Texas. So again, we cover this in the Analemma Dilemma and Roman Commotion Study, if interested. Think about it. We cannot continue to send our children to Caesar for their education and be surprised when they come home as Romans. Get your head out of Virgo Vertigo like I had to and everyone else that is on this journey. It is what it is. You have to come out of the world and its world religious traditions. It is what it is. So again, these are some of the calendars that are out there and they charge, but they're linked to pagan timing. It's very, very upsetting, very, very disappointing, but that's the journey. And uh, you know, we all get over it. So again, if you wanna follow the Talmudic Judaic priesthood, go ahead. We're just sharing the evidence. If you want to follow sunrise type of views like this, remember, the sun does not determine the gates, as Hanok stated. It's the sun, moon, and stars. So this is a fallacy or a lie. And uh, it's fashioned after all of the historical and archaeological monuments that did the very same thing with sunrise and sunset views. So you may want to come out of that 
And some people say, well, you know, use this constellation or that constellation. Well, here's an example. Some people say the Southern Cross. Well, you can't see the Southern Cross. Everyone can't see it like the scriptural stars. So why would someone have an intention to direct you away from what is written in scripture? Hmm. Think about that for a moment. And from an astronomical standpoint, the Southern Cross, all of the stars are not in the magnitude viewing area. One of them is. But you can't see it from all over Earth. So, again, another fail. And then you get people doing this. Squiggly lines, they create stuff out of thin air. And you can't follow this. It's a mess. And then they furthermore tell you, an equator is an imaginary line around the middle of a planet or other celestial body. Well, that's the definition of equator. It's an imaginary line. But on fake, fake book, you'll see um, people are going, uh, they talk about the equator, uh, the sun passed the equator. Well, what does that have to do with scriptural timing? Again, by its very definition, all dictionaries, all dictionaries, an equator is an imaginary line around the middle of a planet or other celestial body. So, again, you could follow that, but you're following a man and or a woman, and you're not being led by a bee again. So, it is what it is, right? So, stop the video. Hanok chapter 72, verse 3 is just wonderful. Uh, Job 38, verses 31 through 33, even better. And... This approach with all of this information is what's known as exegesis. It's when you allow the exposition or explanation of a scriptural text based on a careful objective analysis. The word exegesis literally means to lead out of. Think of it as coming out of the world. Which means that the interpreter of scripture is led to his or her conclusions by following the text. Regrettably, the world does what? They have an eisegesis approach, a yabba dabba do free for all crew movement, which is the opposite approach of exegesis, which is eisegesis, which is the interpretation of scripture based on a subjective non-analytical reading. The word eisegesis literally means to lead into, back into the world, which means the interpreter injects his or her own ideas into the text making it mean whatever they want. Again, let's stick with an exegesis mindset, shall we? And thus the reason why 13th months can be uh, on uh, three, a three-year interval and then on occasion a two-year interval. So we had a 13th month in uh, the pagan month of April 2015, pagan month of March 2018, pagan month of March 2021, and uh, in 2023, as we talked about, in April, and the pagan month of April 2026, we will have another. So, why would Yahuwah's calendar be anywhere, in any shape, form, or manner, linked to the Gregorian? It's not. So again, big skill testing question, are you being led by Abib, and are men or women with their religious traditionalism. And if you think it's a 13th month here and now, well then, you're part of the Talmudic Judaic priesthood. And we're at peace with that. We don't suggest it. We don't advise it. How many are fully aware of what happened to the Judaic priesthood and how the Mashiach Yahushua explained how they were so far off of the belief of Scripture, the way of Yahuwah. So again, uh, here's the night before uh, in 2015 at moonrise, as you can see, Zavi Java's leading the moon, speak as well behind. And as you can see, Regulus is not leading. That's a 12th month. This is a 13th month. Hamal is leading, as you can see, uh, the rest of the scriptural stars, uh, which includes Pleiades and Orion. Here it was for 2018, as per the chart. Zabi Java leading the moon, and the moon is in proximity through the four night watches with Xenia and Parima. Regulus is way up there, 13th month. 
2021, same thing. Zavijava is leading. Moon is in proximity to Zanya and Parima. 2023, Zavijava is leading the moon. The moon is in proximity to Zanya and Parima. 2023, there it is with the constellation arts. And in 2026, Zavijava leading the moon. And the moon is in proximity to Zanya and Parima. That's the 13th month, folks. So this is why we chart all this out. Now, if you're willing to do this in this disciplined, spiritual, laborious manner, then welcome aboard. But if you're here to nitpick one particular month or one particular year without providing a sample of at least 10 years, remember, this sample of 12 years goes back 1,000 and 2,000 and beyond if you're led by a beep and you can go many years ahead as well you can't get that with squiggly lines uh, and following Virgo vertigo that's for sure it just doesn't work how do I know this I made those mistakes with many others and we were corrected thankfully we love correction and thus why we're no longer aligned to any type of Judaic priesthood we're done with it. So hallelujah, it is indeed today, the pagan day of Monday, April 15th, 2024, the third Sabbath of the 12th month, the 22nd day of the 12th month. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you out there. Uh, I've successfully, hallelujah, have gone through uh, two of five gamma knife procedures. I've been battling a brain tumor that is benign, non-cancerous, which is called acoustic neuroma in the left eighth cranial nerve for just under 20 years. And the miracle is I've survived this long and have done all this work and even worked and provided for my family. That's the miracle. Uh, medical community is amazed that uh, I am what they call high functioning with this condition. And I have three more gamma knife procedures uh, that will take place in the next two weeks. So I thank all of you, and I'm sending big hugs for all of your supplications, your palal prayer to Yahuwah, our Father of Lights. Yes, I thank those folks crying out to the Father for my well-being. Why wouldn't I? And uh, this journey has been not only so satisfying in regards to learning the word and more importantly learning how to apply it in one's life that it's helped me get through these uh, past 20 years with these uh, or this type of medical challenge so my family and I are sending big hugs to each and every one of you we will keep you informed uh, so the next two weeks are critical and then uh, there's the healing process that carries on into the next two months all the way to six months so we'll keep you posted and uh, thank each and every one of you for your concern. Acoustic neuroma uh, is unknown as to its cause in this day and age. And me being a researcher, we've looked in every country for the cause, let alone a possible cure. And um, I've done very well. Again, we've, we've dealt with this for 20 years and I'm still kicking. So I'm very, very thankful and at peace, if you will. It's sort of been a gift in many ways. I know that may sound weird to say that uh, having a brain tumor uh, is a gift in some ways. Um, I, I wouldn't wish this on anyone, but make a long story short, it slowed me down to look at what's more important. It's made me more spiritually disciplined to be laborious, to work out my own deliverance in fear and trembling and no one else's and to find peace where I never thought I would find it. And that is in the name of our only Almighty One, the only self-existent one who is Yahuwah. Yes, only He is self-existent. And this is why we cry out to Him for our deliverance, just like His firstborn of all creation did, Mashiach Yahushua. This name means Yahuwah saves, and it also means Yahushua cried out to his father for deliverance. Wow, what peace, what joy. So if you're looking for that comfort, um, there it is. And uh, so 
we'll do our best to do some upcoming videos. Uh, the medical procedures that I'm going through uh, cause great fatigue, but Sabbaths, new moon days, feast days bring great rest. Again, great peace. And they fill you, they restore you with energy to do this regardless of what you have. So until next time, may our only teacher, the Mashiach Yahushua, be in everything we say and do. Hallelujah.